And so she followed this along the road for some time before it then turned off to one side and went down a side track through some fields, past a few trees. There were no other habitations around and she thought it was strange that Mr Fox should live in such an out-of-the-way place. Eventually, the trail, which was now just a few drips here and there, turned off from the main track that she was on, off to the side and down a narrow lane. This she followed, trees overhead, sun dappling through, until it opened out once more and before her was a big mansion with walls and a gate. And she went up to the gate and found it was open, pushed it and went in, and the gate swung. <laughs> behind her. There were no sounds other than that. And nothing moved. Right. Looked about her <laughs> and saw a dog kennel. Then this, this dog kennel was the size of a small house and the dog within it nearly the size of a horse. But it sat still and watched her. She made her way to the stables. There were no stable hands or valets. And she wondered how this could be. Why, when anybody arrived at the inn, there were three or four people to help them off their horse, hang up their saddles and sort the horse out with hay. She went inside, and inside the stable, only a few horses, some empty stalls. She put Bessie in one of the stalls and looked around for some hay for her. And there were only some thin scraps, stuff that she wouldn't even bother with back at home. But these she strewed out, hoping that it would keep Bessie in good fettle for the return 